My name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, we had just finished docking a large fuel module with Curb and Station, and we will be getting back to that very, very shortly because I want to fuel up the Corian and send it on its way out of the Curb and System. Uh, but uh, right now, I got myself oh about 190 science points, and I want to spend it. This this science has come from science that I've transmitted from the moon last episode with my moon of four mission with the two landers that I put down. You might recall that in total there are three landers as well as an impactor associated with that particular mission. I've got two landers on the surface of the moon. I need to get a third down. I need to do the impact science that comes with uh, the Kerbal Interstellar mod. Uh, but right now what I want to do, I don't know, I want to spend this science here, pick up another node. I'm really eyeing this unmanned tech. It gives me better probe bodies. It improves the probe bodies that I already have by giving them some built-in antennas. But what I really like is this, this Lima supply pod. I'm really kind of intrigued by this. It's an unmanned supply pod, and I'm kind of curious as to what supplies I actually can put into it. But uh, that is a tier 7, and I only have enough for a tier 6. I looked at a number of the tier 7s. None of the other ones, I mean, they're all great, but I don't have an immediate need for them. I mean, there's heavy aerodynamics, which gives me really big plane parts and uh, cargo bays and crew c carriers and stuff for big shuttles and big space planes. Got composites here. Uh, mostly I like the infernal robotic parts that come with composites, but also various other structural parts. Um, Took a look at nuclear power, fission reactor from Interstellar. Oh, yeah, I got things I could do with that. But I bailed on all of that tier 7 and just went with my last tier 6. It was heat management. Gives me better radiators, which I certainly will be able to make use of. Uh, and that finishes off tier 6. And if you take a look, I got, I don't know, maybe about a third of the way through tier 7 as well. Tier 7 represents the end of what I can do with my current uh, research and development center and I need about another million or so curb bucks before I can upgrade that so uh, I need to start polishing off some contracts but right now why don't we get ourselves back to curb and station well, the station I think is starting to look quite a bit better now with its recent improvements but we can only admire it for so long because we do have work to do I want to fuel up the Corine and get it on its way but before we can do that need to strut up that fuel module. So we're going to EVA Bill, and he's going to make his way up to this new KIS storage container that we've now installed onto the station. And I sort of realized after doing this that actually one of the advantages of this bigger container is that the Kerbinauts can actually access it from the inside. So I actually could have done this without EVA Bill, but oh well. We'll grab ourselves some of these KAS strut endpoints, and then Bill's going to use those to nicely strut up the fuel module so that as we start to transfer fuel around and the you know we're gonna have mass shifting around on the station everything's gonna remain nice and stable and solid and not get all wonky and wobbly on us and there you go that's it now uh, actually about half of those struts were actually put on in the vehicle assembly building so I know that looks like a lot of struts well it is a lot of struts but a lot of struts is good so that stiffens things up nicely we can then transfer all the resources that we need over to the Karine as well as its crew of Jebediah, Chrissy and Glafia but before it sets off I'm, uh, Glafia has the honor of actually performing one more duty uh, you may recall um, that when the Karine was originally put into space it didn't have its current configuration of solar panels and uh, that's because there was sort of a tragic arrow breaking accident that ended up costing uh, two of our deployable solar panels. And since then, I, I've always felt that the Karayan just never quite looked right. Well, Lafia is going to fix that problem because I finally now have the cargo space to bring up some replacements. We'll just get this positioned here correctly. I do want it to look right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So H and click. Whoa! What happened to the camera? Where are we? Well, that was a little bit strange, but nevertheless, it seems to be there. And uh, the other one went on to the other side with uh, much the same result. But in the end, I can't complain because 
the Korayan has now been restored back to its former glory. We'll get back to Kerbin Station soon enough. We've got a lot more construction to do, but right now, I want to get these folks on their way. And uh, by the time I got around to when I'm, about, I'm going to be doing my burn, I do have a little bit of an issue, as in the station appears to be in my way. So I'm using, well, just finished using the RCS, sort of push myself a little bit to the north and a little bit down, and by down I mean towards Kerbin. Uh, if you look at the nav ball, I do have the station selected as my target. And I think I'm going to be passing to the north and down a bit, but you can see it's close. Now, I'm not completely reckless. <laughs> I did do a quick save before this, so if this didn't turn out well, uh, I would have gone back. But uh, I thought it would be cool to see if we could do a buzz of the station. But we are getting close to the time of our burn. Yep, yeah, let's hit it. See how this goes. Oh, and you might be wondering, why do I have to time my burn uh, at a particular point if I am just leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence? Oh, we are definitely going to be missing. There we go. See, no worries. Well, did get to within 100 meters of it. That was a little closer than I thought it was going to be. Anyway, you might be wondering, why do I have to plan my burn at a specific moment if I'm just leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence? Well, the reason is, is actually, we're not just leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. We're going to take a stop. Well, not a stop. We'll be buzzing by Minmus. Uh, none of these three people have ever been to Minmus, so on our way out, we're going to go by Minmus. Uh... A flyby of Minmus is three experience points, so that'll be three experience points for the three of these folks. And to me, that is a worthwhile thing to add into the mix. So we're just finishing off our burn here. We're going to have to do a correction burn because unfortunately Minmus is at the high point well north of uh, Kerbin's equator. Uh, the plane of Kerbin's equator. So uh, we're going to have to do a correction burn here, but uh, that will have to be for a little bit later. This is because Moon of Four is nearing its uh, landing attempt. Now, you might recall from last episode that Moon of Four was actually a cluster of four probes, and I've already put two landers down onto the Moon's surface from Moon of Four. Um, Moon of Four A landed near the equator, Moon of Four B landed near the North Pole, and now the main body of Moon of Four. Uh, the plan is going to be to land it near the equator, but 90 degrees from Muna 4A. So uh, that way, all the landers will be 90 degrees from each other, which will be perfect for our impact experiment that we're going to do. But before we can land Muna 4, what we got to do is we got to get rid of this impactor probe. This is going to stay in orbit, so we need to get rid of it. So we, you know, we open up its solar panels, we deploy its antenna, so we'll be able to communicate with it. And I'm just having a little bit of difficulty clicking on. There we go. It's off. So we'll get back to that later uh, to do our impact. Meanwhile, Moon of Four, well, it's got a landing to perform. And you see me do lots of powered landings before, so I'm just going to cut to the chase here. Um, I do want to point out, though, that... Uh, According to Kerbal Engineer, right now I have 1,591 meters per second. That's supposed to get me down to the surface. That should be easy enough, and we're just about to begin that descent burn now. There we go. Get me down to the surface. Easy. Back up into orbit. Should be fine as well. And back into Kerbin's surface. That's a little bit sketchy. <laughs> and it was when I was, you know, by the point I was at this, I started to realize, man, I could have, I could have done this so much better, so much more efficiently, just putting a little bit more thought into this mission plan. Uh, so while I'm doing the descent, I'll list all the <laughs> obvious things that occurred to me that I could have done to make this a lot less close. Number one. That impactor probe that we left up there in orbit is completely overbuilt. I'll show that to you when we get back up to it, but pure laziness on my part, uh, it is completely unnecessary the way it was built. Uh, number two, 
uh, docking ports. Why did I use docking ports? Couplers are cheaper. Moreover, why did I use six? I don't need six. I only need three. I'm never going to dock things together again, and I only need three uh, stack decouplers. That would have been a big saving right there. That reaction wheel that you see there, it is a 1.25 meter reaction wheel scaled up using tweak scale to 1.875 meters because I don't have a 1.875 meter reaction wheel. Well, when you scale things using tweak scale, it scales by the cube of the dimension that you scale up and down, which is the correct thing for it to do. But if you take that 1.25 meter reaction wheel, scale it up to 1.875 meters, the mass of the thing comes up to 338 kilograms. That's ridiculous. Um, the the 1.25 meter reaction wheel is, is 0.1 like ton, which is 100 kilograms. Uh, so I, I I added a ton of weight doing that, a ton of torque too, but I don't need that much torque. This thing doesn't need that much torque. So I could have saved lots uh, if I just put a little bit of thought into it. Anyway, as far as the landing goes, that went without any issue. Boink, we are down. Um, and I now have 914 meters per second left. That means that landing cost me 667 meters per second. Not bad. Um, I did want to make sure I landed in a decently level area, so that's why I didn't do the whole suicide burn thing. So it could have been a little bit more efficient, but not bad. Anyway, science time. It's time for us to collect science, and of course we're going to transmit as much of that science as we can, but we are still going to collect it because I do want to get this thing back to Kerbin surface and return that science. So that's why I do have a mystery goo container on it and the... Um, and the uh, materials bay, which I'm not going to transmit. We're going to hang on to that. But mostly what we're here for is the impact science. So we're going to go up here to our seismic sensor. And let's see, uh, which one of these do we want? We want, uh, not the law, no, record seismic data. That's the one. So we'll click on that. And it says that the surface will be monitored for impact events. Alrighty, so we will get to that very shortly. But first, we have two other seismic sensors we have to get to. The first I want to get to, where is it here, is MUNA 4A. So we're going to jump to that. Oh, hang on a second. This is MUNA 2. Well, that's from a dog's age ago. This was actually my first thing I landed on another body. That's not what I want. MUNA 4A. There it is. Okay, and oh, it is completely on the night side, but I can see it there, so we'll do the same thing. Cord seismic data, and now we got to go find ourselves Muna 4B, which is in some twilight. Oh, solar panels aren't collecting anything, but that doesn't matter. We just got to find our seismic data. Seismic record seismic data. There we go, and now we are all set for our impact. And here, once again, is our impactor. And all we have to do is point it retrograde and go. And I did talk about that this thing was crazily overbuilt. Yeah, it actually has a ton of monoprop in it. Has as much monoprop in it as the landers, believe it or not. So I could actually technically soft land this on the moon, which I don't want to do. So why did I put so much monoprop in the thing? Because I'm lazy. It is actually the exact same probe as those with just the landing legs ripped off. What I should have done, I mean, all it needed to be was a battery, a probe core, a communitron, a couple of solar panels, and then something to deorbit it. It didn't need this much. A few separatrons would have been enough. That's all it needed. So I could have saved a ton of weight on this thing too. Instead, I am crashing this overly built probe into the moon's surface. And we are just about there. And... Uh, and we have that uh, impact recorded science report can now be accessed from one of your accelerometers deployed on this body and of course the one we're going for is going to be the main one on MUNA 4. Okay so we find the seismic sensor here and collect impact data and boom 290 science. Well not boom yet really right because uh, I still have to get this back to Kerbin's surface. I'm not going to be transmitting it because the last time I transmitted this much science I ran out of electricity and it was lost. So the only way we're going to be able to make use of this is if we get it back to Kerbin. 
Okay, just gonna get my bearings here. I wanna head off east. All right, let's do it. So we're off, we're gonna pitch right over eastward and get ourselves right over. There's no big hills in our way, so. And we're gonna cut off when we get our apoapsis up to just around 10 kilometers. Closing in on that, boom, okay, there we go, 10 and a half kilometers. And then what we'll do, we'll just cut up to uh, apoapsis and the completion of our circularization. And oh, this wobble, this wobble is getting worse and worse. Uh, and I think this is some sort of a conflict between remote tech and uh, the stock sort of SAS stuff. Well, regardless, we are just about there. A little more. And uh, just getting it up to 10 kilometers on that. Whoa. Okay. A little bit more. There we go. 10 kilometers periapsis. We are there and we have 290 meters per second left. And this wobble is driving me crazy. So I think from here on in, I'm just going to use the remote tech flight computer. I'm just looking at what my, my pitch is zero. So let's just do this there. There, that stops the wobble. That'll do it. I'll just have to use the flight computer from here on in. Okay, so 290 meters per second to get this thing back home. After a little bit of playing around, I ended up plotting this 278 meter per second burn. I got my periapsis with Kerbin down to 33 kilometers well into the atmosphere. Yep, this is going to work. Boy, this made me feel good, I can tell you that. And as Moon of Four makes its getaway from the moon, clutching on to all of that 12 meters per second of Delta V it has left, we're going to draw this episode to a close. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.